and we are live hello everyone welcome welcome to this live stream um, with myself Bola Abimbola and Shannon Corporan and we are going to be talking today about loving your life and this is really something that can be difficult at times when we are living in this three density this third density existence where the mind is fully overwhelmed a lot of the times and so we have to come to a place of conscious awareness of loving our own lives and today I will be talking with Sharon with Shannon to um, really elaborate on how we can come to do this in a much more easier way so I'll introduce Shannon Cochran all the way from Texas Texas USA welcome Shannon Hi, thank you so much for, this is my favorite subject, how to love your life, how to connect with your higher self, all of that goodness. So thank you for um, having, letting us spend this time together. So I'm Shannon Corporon. I am a life coach and a teacher, but right now my most important role is I'm host of the Love Your Life Toolkit Summit, which starts today. And so we have, I have interviewed 21 experts from all walks of life. Um, that are going to share how do we love ourselves and how do we love our lives because we know things happen all the time but how do we connect with that higher self how do we connect with the love that it is us how do we honor ourselves when all this stuff happens how do we deal with our triggers and so each speaker is going to be talking through their modality of ex expertise and sharing what to do when you feel stuck or when you just get taken off guard, feel trigger, and then you're going to create a toolkit so that you're prepared when things happen or you feel stuck or you just don't know what to do. We're going to be prepared. You're going to get your tools out of your toolkit and you are going to walk yourself out of that stuck feeling. So you can go and register. It starts today at Love Your Life toolkit.com you can register it's a free event and email and an email will be sent to you every day for 21 days with an interview with an expert from like i said all walks of life and um, you'll be able to create tools to love yourself and love your life that's amazing that's amazing thank you shannon honestly i think this is such an interesting topic loving our lives because when we think about it we definitely are usually in a place of overwhelm because i mean when i when i take this back giving it some context before the 17th century we definitely saw our mind body spirits and soul as one the human being was defined in that way but later on um it really became much more about the mind about the you know what we could, what could be logical what could be rational and we focused more on what we could see and less on what we could not see and some of the difficulties that this has caused for us is that we are constantly feeling that we are um you know we are um in fear we are in fear we are overburdened no matter how much sleep and rest we have had we're finding ourselves on the go all the time and the mind is in suffering this is what happens when we are focusing too much on the mind and the body and not enough on the spirit it is difficult to love our life because life as we know it when we're focusing on the mind and body is really about fear we are believing in this danger around us even when we are lying down relaxing after a long day we're still em embodying that fear there was a study that was done in 2005 and he talks about how we have 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts going through our minds every day. And 80% of those thoughts are repetitive and 90% of them are really negative. How do we love our lives when we are dealing with all of this? And this is where my book comes in. I'm the author of the Daily Soul Bites book. This is now available anywhere books are sold online. I'm also the producer of the Daily Soul Bites show, which is on YouTube and anywhere books are sold online. And the audio book is coming out. Well, it's out, but it will be launched on the 28th of October of August. So I really encourage you to, to grab your copy. This book I wrote in 2020. And this was really about me coming to terms with the Kundalini awakening which I had 
which is about the unfolding of the energy centers within us and was also about this out of body experience that I had. I really could no longer deny the exist existence of spirit at that point. I had already been through a series of um, training before that. I am also an energy practitioner. I run the Soul Space Healing Practice here in London, UK. And really it's about providing energy healing to those who are ready to hold that intention to release whatever li limiting beliefs that they hold, whatever limiting beliefs that you hold that are stopping you from really experiencing that new way of being. Because that is what loving your life is about. It's about experiencing the new way of being. And my book, Daily Soul Bites, for an inspired life, contains 31 nuggets. And these are nuggets that talk about different aspects of self, the higher self and the physical ego self. The higher self really has a lot of perspectives that are usually empowering perspectives. And the physical ego self are usually holding perspectives around fear around being a victim so when we come to that place where we are understanding these different perspectives which is what my book helps you to do it's a permission slip that really helps you to come to become much more familiar with the perspectives of the higher mind perspectives of love of compassion of self-care of resilience of joy of compassion these are the things that really allow us to open up and receive the intuition that is coming from that higher self. Now, the body, we know that the body is real. This is, this is something that we have come, you know, we really have to come to um, understand and accept. Accepting the physical ego mind, accepting that physical body, but also accepting the spirit self that we are. This is what Carl Jung talks about, the four aspects of self, mind, body, soul, and intuition. We must come to that place where we are allowing the spirit self to drive us, this higher self to drive our physical ego being. This is when we really can love our life. And I'm so pleased that Shannon is having this, to, this toolkit ready. And I will pass it on to her now to talk more about the speakers, the speakers that will be part of the virtual summit that she started today. Yeah, so um, so many of the things that you talk about in your book um, are a through line that you will see for all of the speakers. And so we have a wide variety of speakers that really, that one of the through lines is connecting to your higher self. Now, they might have other words for that, but that's what I'm calling this, about the awareness of the spark that's in you, connecting to the knowing, to the love that is in you. And you'll see it with the speakers and they're talking through all kinds of modalities. Like we have executive coaches and speakers today. Dr. Rao um, is starting us off today. And he has, if you're familiar with Mind Valley, he has the most downloaded course on Mind Valley. And he just has so much wisdom to share. Um, we also have all the way on, you know, the other spectrum, we have shamans and people that use astrology. Um, and then everything else in between, money experts, um, you know, how not to have to live on a budget. She's, they, she's got some beautiful things to say that allow you to come from a limiting mindset. Also, we have relationship coaches. We have people that um, help you deal with narcissists, um, help people get you out of your comfort, comfort zone. All kinds of people tr transition. So we have a man and a woman, um, transitions that happen in midlife, transitions that happen after death, divorce, um, just kind of any, when your kids are leaving, just any kind of transitions that we all go through. And then we have this young, precious guy who's like 28 years old, who has been traveling all around the world working with teens. We talk a lot about parenting strategies to help your teen and parenting. So there's a wide variety of people, but there's just some through lines, gratitude. How do you connect with your highest self? How do you connect with your purpose? How do you connect with your passion? These are all things that are gonna light you up and help you appreciate yourself, love yourself. And then when you begin to love yourself because you are connected with this inner wisdom, with this knowing, with this higher self, 
then you're going to be able to see the beauty that is in your life and love your life more. So once again, I encourage everybody to be a part of the Love Your Life Toolkit Summit. It's free and you just go to loveyourlifetoolkit.com and register. And then for the next 21 days, you will have emails sent to you with links to the um the interview videos and then each of the speakers gives you a free gift to help you to um, embrace what they're sharing more. So um, I encourage everybody to do that. And one, like I kept talking about higher self is the main through line. And so Bola, how do you connect your higher self so that people can love their lives more? What's a strategy or a tool you can share? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. I love the word modalities because it's re they're really permission slips. Whatever you use, whether it's hypnotherapy, whether it's um, energy healing, whether it's reading, whether it's coaching, therapy, they're all permission slips. They're all about giving ourselves the permission to connect to that higher self. There's so many different ways to do it. And it's just about being aware. For me, self-awareness is where it all begins. Being really aware of our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, and knowing whether those thoughts and emotions are taking us higher or lower in vibration. It's all about vibration. We know when we feel low and we know when we feel high. And this third density experience, this earthly experience is all about choice. Knowing that we can, we can choose. We're not victims. We can choose really to raise our vibration using whatever modality. And Shannon's toolkit has so many modalities on it. I am an energy practitioner. A lot of my tactics, a lot of my slips are around energy healing. Energy healing allows us to really expand the energy meridians within us. We all have energy meridians within us, and they're usually blocked when we have been through trauma, when we're stressed out. And what energy healing does is it effortlessly helps to expand our energy meridians as we intend. We have to set the intention. We have to allow these changes to happen within us, and only then can we see the changes outside of us in the reflection. So I use a lot of inner inquiry as well, which is really about connecting to the truth within the thoughts. Why am I feeling this? Why did I respond to this in this way? And sometimes we feel we cannot inquire into ourselves. There is a fear that we sometimes have, a reluctance, an inertia to step into that place within us, to ask our own self questions, to allow the thoughts that are within the mind to become more, more open, more explicit. And sometimes journaling is a good way to do this, where you're bringing the thoughts to the surface. So self-awareness, however modality, whatever modality you want to use to become more aware of the thoughts, the feelings and the emotions are that belong within. And then it's about mindfulness, being very aware of whether you are high or low and knowing you want to align. And that's what my book contains, higher perspectives that you can be, be, become more familiar with and choose to align because we only align. We only choose what we are familiar with. So familiarity is key. And then there is integration, integration of the polarities, because when we are aware of the negative and the positive within us, we have to be able to hold both. We have to have tolerance. We have to have faith. And we have to hold space for the parts of us that are feeling low, the parts of us that are feeling stressed. And there are lots of modalities as well that help with that, as well as energy healing. And I go through that in my programs. And there's also trauma recovery this is really about understanding the helplessness that we felt as a child or in the past relationship because our relationships change us our relationships build us and we can come to enjoy as well as manage these relationships when things do not go particularly well for us in these relationships and trauma recovery is really about understanding 
what limits we now hold in our in our minds and in our bodies because the body also holds memories the memories of our relationships or our trauma is not just in the mind it's not just mental it's also somatic it's physical as well so trauma recovery is about understanding these limits within us so that we can transmit we can find it easier to flow with life to flow with the synchronicities, the, co the coincidences that come, that we come across. And it is only when we are in this place where we are understanding the limits of the mind as well as the expansiveness of the mind that we can choose to align. It's all about choice. We do have the power and we can come to really trust in that as we become more familiar using different modalities, using books, using um, toolkits, so that we can be empowered beings and enjoy this new way of life, really love our life. Yeah. And that's how, I, that's how I help my clients and that's how I transmute. Living as my higher self. You still have ups and downs. There's always the ups and downs of life. It never ends. But what we come to do quicker and quicker is we come to transmute these limits as they occur, we, we respond differently. The response, how we respond, really does show us how we have changed. Uh, because sometimes the outside looks the same, but we respond differently because we have learned to align to a higher perspective. We have learned to hold faith. We have learned to develop some sort of resilience within us. And this is the practice of the spiritual life. So that's what I do. That's what I do, Shannon. Yeah, and there's a, a lot of the things that you're saying are, are some other through lines that you, you see in all of them. And it really is about awareness. And even if people don't call it somatic, we all feel it in our body. And so I use the word somatic. But everybody can feel when you have a feeling or you have a reaction, you feel it in your body. And the more that you can tap in to how you feel and where it feels in your body and just kind of allow it and allow that part to speak to you. There's just so much good information that will allow you to be really honest with yourself and accept where you're at and then connect to that higher self or that wisdom or that inspiration lies where infinite intelligence knows how to walk you out of your stuck, knows how to walk you out of giving you clues to where you can make that mind shift and where you make this more familiar to yourself than like, you know, you were saying this becomes more familiar and then you're not just reacting because you have this story playing in your head and all these limiting beliefs that were attached to it, but you have a shift and you can feel it in your body and you're connecting with the love that is you. And then inspired action comes to guide you a different way to an opening and it feels amazing in your body and you, and you feel it and you're like okay i want more of this let's make more of this familiar how do you help your clients or the people that you work with make that feeling and that connection with the highest self more a daily part of mm. their experience yes thank you shannon i think it's really important to um become much more familiar of the habits that we have because the habits are the things that we do from when we wake up to when we go to bed sometimes we're not aware of them and we need to have healthy habits some of the habits that we have had or we have been conditioned with do not allow us to enjoy our life to love our life and sometimes we think these habits are hard to change but all we need to be aware of is that habit is I am doing something I no longer like. That is all we need. An awareness that this particular habit no longer serves me. It may have served me before, but it no longer serves me now. So awareness, again, awareness is key. But what are we being aware of? We're being aware of the habits that no longer serve us. And once we become aware of it, we can know that we have the power. It's not anybody else's responsibility to actually help us to shift these habits. If I know that on a daily basis I'm eating something or, or engaging with particular people or engaging with particular acts that do not serve me anymore, 
just continuing to hold that intention. It may not happen in the first week. Depends on how much spiritual practice and how much power we have given to our own self. This is the higher self allowing us to surrender because surrender is key. The self trying to change the self, the ego self trying to change the self, these habits of the ego self being changed by the ego self itself can be a struggle. The real um, juice lies in the, in, the, in, in the ego self surrendering to the higher self. And then you just suddenly find yourself one day, you're no longer feeling the inclination to do those habits. You're no longer feeling the inclination to, to interact in a certain way. Because the, the change can only come through compassion, through love. The habits that we discover, we will only change these habits, not by force. It will come from a place of compassion, a place of love. So self-care comes into it. When we, when we discover these habits, we know that we have to love ourselves even more. That self that is wanting to change has to feel safe, has to feel secure, has to feel loved, in order for it to surrender to the higher self. And it's the higher self that makes the change. Otherwise, the ego self is all about survival. It's all about fear and survival. So this is what I explain to my clients when we have our sessions. It's really about understanding what the habits are, understanding how to really become much more loving, much more caring of ourselves, being aware, being aware of the different aspects of ourselves that we no longer want to see a part of. We want to say goodbye to these selves now. And it has to come from a place of love and surrender. And what we surrendered yesterday is different from what we will surrender today because it is a journey. It's a journey and this is where the tools are important. The tools of awareness, the tools of mindfulness, the tools of integration, of trauma recovery because there are layers and layers of trauma that we're peeling away. And there's also the tool of transmutation, that alignment to ourselves. So this is, this is the journey, and it's about having the tools with us that we use consistently as empowered beings. It's about taking responsibility for our own self. Yeah. And I would love to know, I'd love to know a bit more about where people can find your toolkit, Shannon. Okay, so we're creating this toolkit from speakers. So you'll go to loveyourlifetoolkit.com and you'll register. It's a free event. And then um, every day for the next 21 days. And 21 days is important because we can't create a habit, you know, in one day. So you're going to have ahas and then you're going to be connected with something. You're like, oh, I'm going to try that. Um, I, I think our phones are a great tool to help us facilitate that before you go to bed, you, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to use that tool. I'm going to use that technique that the speaker shared. And then you're going to, um, get out your phone, set an alarm for when you're going to do it the next day. And then we're going to keep doing that so that we are creating habits for 21 days and things are going to change. Um, and so every day you'll get a different speaker. You'll have 48 hours to watch the video. And we just want to fill up our toolkit so that we're just not taken aback and just react or feel stuck. When things happen or ongoing things are going on, it gives us tools to connect to our higher self, to connect to the love that is us and that always surrounds us so that we can more fully be love in the world and love our life. So go to loveyourlifetoolkit.com. Thank you, Shannon. And again, I will encourage all the audience watching this, um, this retake on my profiles as well as Shannon's profile to grab, to sign on, to sign on to the Love Your Life Toolkit and also to grab Daily Soul Bites, which is now available on Amazon and Barnes and & Nobles and Barber Press. It was published by Barber Press in 2023, the paperback. And the audiobook is now out on Audible and is going to be launched on the 28th of August. And I do thank you 
all for joining us today, myself and Shannon. Shannon and I are buddies. We have been working together to grow our YouTube channels and it's been we've been buddies together to actually achieve this. Working together with people who resonate with you. This is key. And the relationships we have that help us to align to our goals are the things that we really want to be resonating with as we move forward. So this is really wonderful. I'm really appreciating sharing this live stream with Shannon. Thank you so much, Shannon. Oh, yes. Thank you. And everybody, you know, create your tools, whether it's Bola's book or you're going to the loveyourlifetoolkit.com and register because you have so much to give. You are love. You're magnificent. And the, your higher self wants to take the lead. So let's create a toolkit where you can express the beauty and the greatness and the love that is you. So thank you, Bola. Thank you, everyone. And wishing you a most wonderful day, everyone. Take very good self-care. Bye-bye. <laughs>